Good and gracious God, we come to you together in this space with hearts and ears open to the movement of the Spirit here among us today. May we enter into this space ready to hand over the things of this world that hold us down or that draw us away from you so that we can experience more of who you are. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this group of people in this space and online who are eager to pursue after your heart. And thank you that you first pursue our hearts, God. Allow us to enter into this time of worship, fully embracing who you say you are for us. It is your holy name we pray. Amen. Sing this part, you guys sing it back. Take a moment to remember who God is and who I am. There you go, lifting my Lord again. Take a moment to remember who God is and who I am. There you go, lifting my Lord again. There you go, lifting my Lord again. Take a moment to remember who God is and who I am. There you go, lifting my Lord again. No longer am I held. 
held by the yoke of this world. I come up on the yoke of God, Jesus. His yoke is easy, his burden is so high. No longer am I held by the yoke of this world. I come up on the yoke of Jesus. His yoke is easy, his burden is so high. burden is so high. You're lifting my load. 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 No longer am I held by the yoke of this world. I come up under the yoke of Jesus. His yoke is easy. His burden is so high. No longer am I held by the yoke of this world. I come up under still being moved and strongholds are still being loosed and God we believe yes we can see it the wonders are still what you do and bodies are still being are still being slain. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. Wonders are still what you do. We are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. We are here.
come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come and do share my soap to, to kick this off. Uh, again, we have the five verses of the week, um, and I don't know what any, anybody else is going to share, but this is, uh, this is my soap journal for the week. Uh, I did this on Thursday. Romans 8, verses 26 and 27. Paul says this, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance to the will of God. So the next is the O part. Paul says, in the same way. In the same way, when we are weak and heavy burdened, in the same way, Jesus takes up the brokenness in the same way he intercedes on our behalf on the cross is the same way he brings us to the feet of God to communicate with God. While our words may be few or miss the point, Paul seems to be saying in the same way God has done things throughout the generations, in the same way that God brought Jesus to the cross, in the same way God brought Jesus out of the tomb is the same way through our experience of talking with God. The Spirit moves to bring the words to us to speak with God. A, application. Oftentimes, I'm speaking to myself, don't know what to say, so I stick with what I know how to say. But can I allow the Spirit to intercede more, especially in my prayer life by myself and in my prayer life with others? I want to share my prayer. Lord God, wordless groans are a constant experience for many of us. So are word-filled groans. But in your word to us, I hear you say, let me speak my words through you. I hear you say, I know your heart better than you. And I certainly know my will better than you. So Lord, help me in my word-filled and wordless groans be overcome by your interceding. May I seek your words and your will as I lean into the reality of Paul's words. Thank you, Lord, that you are the Lord of all over every generation. Lord, would you be intentional to intercede in my life with your words? Thank you, God. Amen. Penny. I thought, I love the Lord my God with all my heart. I know I love him with all my heart. He's my everything. And my soul, I have the Holy Spirit in my soul. He's my comforter. He wipes my tears. He's my teacher. And then I thought, what does that mean, strength? Love the Lord your God with all your strength. And I thought, the strength, is that your soul and heart together? And no, it's separate because it's heart, soul, and strength. And I said, God, tell me what you mean by by strength. And then he's spoke to me, I love to work out, and um, I, I love to walk, and so strength to me is at nighttime, I will do my stretches, and then I'll do my planks, and I do them with my elbows on the floor, and my toes on the floor, and a straight back, and the first minute, second minute, third minute, fourth minute is easy. Then comes the fifth, sixth, and on. But the thing is, I push myself till the strength no longer can hold me up. So I'm depleted and I'm spent. And then I will lift my free weights. 
and I'll do my biceps till I can't do anymore, till I cannot pick up that weight, and my strength is depleted. And then I'll do my triceps till I'm depleted. And then I'll do my push-ups, hands on the floor, toes on the floor, and a full push-up. And when I reach the 20th, my body is so done. Strength. And I thought, you know what? To love God with all your strength means to deplete yourself. It means to get rid, get out of God's way. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I so much want to give God everything, not my strength. I want his strength in me, and I'm just, I'm just so glad that God talks to me that way, and in, in my prayer, in my prayer, my honest prayer is, God, help me deplete myself of me so that you have a place to live completely. So that's my soap. <laughs> I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. So I'm laying you're here with me. I reach out in you. Find me in the dust. If you say no amount of untruths can separate I reach out in you, find me in the dust, and you say no amount of untruths 
can separate us. I reach out in you, find me in the dust. Can you say no? First, I got is uh, First Corinthians, chapter two, um, which I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but uh, just a couple <clears throat> verses from that that are based what I based myself on are uh, we speak to our verse thirteen. We also speak these things not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual things to spiritual people. But the person without the Spirit does not receive what comes from God's spirit because it is foolishness to him. He is not able to understand it since it is evaluated spiritually. And that might sound really confusing. Some of them are capital S, Holy Spirit, from God, and some of them are small s, our spirit. Um, but let's see, what I, uh, and what's the O again? Observation. Observation, okay. The Apostle Paul is explaining God communicates with our spirit through his Holy Spirit. When we only think in terms of earthly wisdom, we close ourselves to that communication. The language of the spirit was brought into the world by Jesus Christ. Paul tells us many did not understand it then, and I guess I think many don't understand it today. Uh, my uh, takeaway from this was to know and use the gifts the Holy Spirit has given me and to talk with God often about those. They're not always uh, evident. I guess we bury them. And uh, a prayer I have for this is, Our Father in heaven, how often I think of what you are saying to me in only earthly terms. Forgive me and bless me with an open-hearted mind to recognize, accept, and make evident all that comes to my spirit from the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Um, the the verse that, that um, kind of spoke to me, well, they all did. They really did and really got me to thinking so much. But um, day three was Luke 18, 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them uh, that they should always pray and not give up. And what jumped out at me and what spoke to me um, was the not give up. And um, I guess... Uh, a real application in my life very recently, I'm just going to testify to it, was something I've been praying for a situation for at least four years. And a good three weeks ago, it's like a flip, like the switch flipped, because I've been praying so diligently, seeking so hard after God's will in this situation, and I believed that he was going to work it out Somehow, I didn't know how, but I truly believe, and I was waiting and watching how he was going to do this, and it did happen. Um, 
the power of persistent prayer is just so evident. That was a recent example. Um, and I just, um, I'm trying to see if there's anything. Oh, yeah, I want to just always give God the glory for every time he does answer prayer the way we want to or in a way better way. I always say God's out in left field because sometimes he answers your prayers when you least expect it, when you where and how you least expect it, but being persistent, standing firm, never give up. He is listening. So that was my, um, my observation and my application. Deuteronomy 6, uh, 6 and 7 in particular, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart. Um, remember the uh, Moses was talking to the Israelites. They were getting ready to go into the promised land. And he knew that there were going to be lots of people, lots of different gods, and he wanted to reemphasize to them that he was God. And he was telling them from his heart what they needed to do as they were going into this new land. Okay, so these commandments I give to you are to be on your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Um, those who know me know that I've always been interested in, in children. And I'm, I think back when we were raising our own children and doing our best to teach them God's word. But as I look back, I think, kind of depended a lot on the church to do that job for me rather than uh, working better um, to put these thoughts into our own children at home. So now I can't go back and do the things that I wish I could, but I guess I, I think about especially the young, the young people with the younger children. Um, how important it is to teach them the Word of God. Help them to memorize Scripture. The Scriptures that come to me now at my age are the ones I learned as a child. In Sunday school, we used to have contests to learn the Scriptures. And, of course, at that point, I was learning them for a prize. But you know what? The prize was mine because I learned those things and I could teach them to my children later and to live by them. So as young parents, grandparents, teach your kids what the Bible says so that they have this rich um, relationship with God that they can have as they grow. Uh, my scripture in this was, the, um, was Luke 11. And I've always... Uh, I've always been kind of one that when things were falling apart that I would, I would pray for it. And I thought about, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't always pray for, for, for good things. You know, I always pray for, for healing and, and things like that. The scripture verse, um, Luke 11, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he had finished, one of his, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John has taught his disciples. And what I've seen in the past couple of years and, and how this church has, has moved around, uh, the addresses have changed. Um, there wasn't an address at one time. It was just in a parking lot uh, over here on the hill. But what I've seen through children's ministry in this church and watching these kids grow up with these positive influences um, with people who are adults who are willing to give their time uh, and have a lot of patience. I mean, you got to have a lot of patience for that. Um, I run out of here at Noisy Offering every week. It, there's teachers downstairs. They don't need me. I'm usually there with this and getting stuff up on the screen and, and running the YouTubes and, and, and stuff like that. But I'm just there to listen to these children. And then when you ask them to pray and just to listen to the prayers of a child and what they pray for is just, is just a, an amazing thing. So 
I just want to uh, close out this, this part of what I'm saying with the prayers, and the prayer is what Bonnie just uh, said in her verse, was uh, lead the children to me, God says. So we just ask that, Father, you, you cover this church, you cover all the churches in our county, you cover all the churches of the world, that children can stand and worship you with love and without shame. And it is a simple gospel. Sometimes these children are, t are told that they're not good enough. God, we, these children are, are, are beautiful in this building, and they're beautiful in your eyes. So we just pray this, and that if any child ever if, if feels like they need someone to talk to, that they just reach out. Don't try to take it on your own. Amen. and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen, church. Have a wonderful week.